Hello wonderful humans, my name is Eden, this is Tallulah, and today we're going to talk about pigeons as pets. So whether you're considering getting one, or you're sitting there wondering, I didn't even know people kept pigeons as pets, this video should help answer some questions you have. This is Tallulah, my two-year-old rescue fantail dove. I've had her for one year now, and she's going to help me explain what it's like to share your life with a pigeon. Yeah. So what are pigeons like? Simply put, they're fantastic. I absolutely adore them. Yes, yes I do. There are lots of parts of pigeon behavior that make them really fantastic companions. The first one, which is pigeons are actually fully domesticated. They're one of the oldest domesticated bird species that exist. It's estimated that we domesticated pigeons about 6,000 or so years ago. So they are used to us in an innate way, in a similar way to cats and dogs, which is fantastic considering that if you're used to parrots, those are virtually wild. They're tame, but they're wild. They are often just a few generations removed from their wild ancestors, whereas we've lived with these guys for pretty much ever. While this might come as a surprise, pigeons are actually really affectionate animals. And while of course this is dependent upon personalities of individual birds, overall, most people I know who have pigeons have birds that love to cuddle with them, get head scratches, they'll follow them around, uh, lay on their laps, take naps, just like really affectionate. Pigeons are super social and live in large flocks when they're feral, wild, or usually if they're kept more traditionally in a dovecot. They're not as prone to be attached to just one person and hate everyone else the same way that some breeds of parrots are. Pigeons are honestly pretty chill. Their idea of a happy day is typically waking up, getting some cuddles, eating some food, doing some preening, and then having a nap. And they pretty much just repeat this throughout the day. Pigeons are affectionate, calm-tempered, and usually pretty quiet, particularly if you get a girl. While the males are more likely to coo fairly frequently and quite loudly, the girls are more likely to do some little grumbles or the occasional coo. And if you're comparing it to a parrot, then even the males are quiet by contrast. Pigeons are super affectionate and love spending time with their people, but they also are fairly independent and are going to want chunks of time just to go off and do their own thing. When it comes to intelligence and training, pigeons are pretty clever. Almost every study that comes out that's been done on pigeon intelligence has just indicated more and more intelligence than we previously thought. So while you can train them to do things like go potty, uh, step up, come, all those kind of things, as well as some tricks, they, at least in my experience working with Tallulah, are bit more challenging to work with than a parrot and take a little longer to figure things out. While some people have successfully trained their pigeons to go potty on command or either have certain spots that they go to the bathroom, not all of them have been able to pick this up. Tallulah has not have, doesn't have a clue and is having a really hard time with that particular command. But it's not a huge deal because despite the fact that pigeons poo very frequently, about once every half hour when it comes to her, it's not a huge deal because you can use these. This is a harness. They've also been called flippers, bird diapers, among other things. Not only do most pigeons adjust pretty quickly and easily to wearing these sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it all adjusted. Nice. They provide two services. One, they work as a flight harness. So you can take them outside or to friends' houses or wherever it is you might want to take your bird which is something that both Tallulah and I love because then Tallulah gets a more enriched life and I get to have a friend that goes everywhere with me. Having a harness makes going out significantly safer because it prevents them from being blown away, flying away, getting scared, jumping off into things. It's significantly safer than simply having your bird's wings clipped and taking them out. The second reason that harnesses are so fantastic, particularly this kind, yeah, is that they have a pocket built in and this pouch holds any poop that they do while they're wearing it away from the body, keeping the bird clean and sanitary in a little pouch to make it so that there's no mess. This is fantastic, especially for birds like Tallulah that have a really hard time understanding the concept of being potty trained and just want to go poo all the time everywhere. I just took her harness off because it's about a million degrees today and I don't want her getting overheated. The next thing that's important to think about when looking at pigeons as pets is housing. I'm only gonna be talking about the way that people who keep pigeons as companion animals do that. So dovecots are not going to be part of the conversation. When it comes to pigeons, there are lots of ways you can keep them. One 
is an aviary. If you have multiple birds so they won't be lonely, this is a fantastic idea. You just have to make it really secure so that no wildlife or local cats and dogs will hurt your birds. Another way is having an entire room to themselves. Sometimes it's just them taking over other people's rooms. For example, Tallulah, who is out from dawn till dusk, has free reign in my bedroom during the day and it's essentially hers. I just am allowed to sleep in it. You may notice Tallulah's a bit damp, especially her feetsies. I did that because as I started filling this next part, she started panting a bit. So we had to take a break and have a cool bath to try and help her not overheat, which leads really well into another consideration when it comes to housing, which is that not only do you have to make sure they stay safe from any predators, including animals within your house, like cats and dogs, and any predators might be outside if they're in an aviary, you also need to make sure that they have temperature control to an extent. Pretty much if you're comfortable, they're comfortable. So not super hot, no sitting directly in front of windows that will have direct sun during the day or at any time really, because uh, you don't want them to overheat like she almost did because it's a million degrees. <sighs> you also don't want them in a really drafty place where they might get cold. But aside from that, overall, they are quite hardy when it comes to temperature changes to the point that even if you live in a place that gets relatively cold in the winter, you can still have pigeons that live in aviaries all year long. Another way that people keep pigeons is in dog crates, specifically extra large or extra extra large, the biggest one you can get really. These are fantastic because since they do not have the kind of feet that, pi that parrots do, they cannot climb. So they need to be able to hop onto places, perch, fly, that kind of thing. So vertical cages without lots of big platforms don't do them any good. And because of this love for flat spaces, extra extra large dog crates are ideal. Pigeons are platform loving birds. So perches, while you can have a couple in there, are not going to be their favorite. They're going to be platforms all the way. For Tallulah, the only toys that she really enjoys is she's got a ball with a, cat, a bell in it that's for cats that works great for her, as well as her mirror, which is okay to use for pigeons because as mentioned before, studies have shown that they can identify themselves in a mirror. So you're not going to freak them out by making them think there's some other bird there. They do really enjoy it and have lots of fun playing with it, especially making it clink. She loves making it clink against the bars. Some other pigeons enjoy playing with small stuffed animals, usually just wrestling with them, especially if they're males. They also will mount them if they're males. So heads up, that is a thing that happens. And if they are broody, they might collect pieces of paper and build a nest, but that's more of just a natural activity for them to do more so than them playing. The next thing to think about if you're considering getting a pigeon is feeding them. And honestly, they're significantly easier both on the wallet and just pr preparation than other birds, particularly once again, parrots. I keep referring to parrots because they're the most common bird to be kept as pets. So you're likely to be familiar with them at least to an extent. Pigeons naturally are seed eaters. So most of their diet is going to be made up of a seed mix. This is usually really easy to find. You can find different grades. Uh, ideally, you want to get the one that's the highest quality you can. The most important thing though, is no matter what kind of seed mix you get, when you first get the bag of it, you need to take some out and then do a sprouting test to see if they sprout. If they don't, no matter the quality of the seed, that means that they're dead and old and they're gonna have very little nutrients. So that's not something that should be fed to them. Pigeons also will eat a small amount of vegetables like lettuce and other greens, but because they are primarily seed eaters, it is not a huge part of their diet. Pigeons also need access to clean, fresh water at all times of the day. Now they can't have a shallow dish because pigeons are one of only two birds in the world that drink via sucking. So they submerge their entire length of their beak into the water and then they suck it up. They don't scoop. The other key thing to making sure that they stay healthy when it comes to food is that they need a supplement powder added to their food. This is essential because it will balance out the vitamins, minerals, nutrients that they have. The uh, reason it's so important, especially if you have a female, is that pigeons will usually, not always, but usually a pigeon that's well established in its home, whether it has a, another pigeon friend or it's just with you, they typically will lay eggs, two eggs, every month. 
Now, having enough calcium that is able to be absorbed into their body is essential because they use calcium to build the shell of the egg. And if they don't have enough, it will make them weaker by virtue of the fact that they're trying to leach the body of the vitamins and the minerals they need to make their egg. Additionally, the egg might become weak and then it could become egg bound, which would can be fatal for birds. Grit is another thing that pigeons use because they swallow their seeds whole. So they need something to help grind the seeds to get the hulls off. They don't take the hulls off just with their mouth like how pig parrots do. They just eat the whole things whole. Yeah. Thank you. Sticking your tail in my face. Now the current consensus is that the healthiest way for pigeons to have access to their grit, usually in the form of oyster shell, is to have it sprinkled like salt on their dish of food. You don't want to have them for some reason decide to gorge on it, especially if they have just a bowl of straight grit because they could become impacted. Another great thing to keep in mind when considering a pigeon is how many to get. Now the answer to that question varies person to person depending on who you ask. Overall, pigeons can do well going from being a single bird to being a part of a large flock. Something important to keep in mind is that if you get an adult bird, there's a high chance that they've already made it and pigeons mate for life. So if they are already established pair, you don't want to separate them. So for the most part, when you have an adult, you will often end up having two just by virtue of the fact that they're already a married pair. Now, even pigeons who have a pair bond frequently become very attached to their humans as well. So just because you have multiple birds or you're planning to get multiple birds pff, does not mean you won't be able to be friends with them. If there's two or more, they are going to need you a bit less because they're getting socialization from another source as well. So they might spend a bit more time on their own. This can be a fantastic thing. If you're someone who works away from home or doesn't have a whole lot of time to spend with your bird, it's better likely for you to have two birds who are bonded to each other <laughs> because then they will be able to entertain and occupy each other. That said, single birds, as I mentioned before, can do just great. The caveat to that is that they need to be a bird that likes people. If you have a pigeon that you got as a single bird and they are terrified of you for whatever reason, they just will not like you, they just, they're a bird bird, not a person bird. That's fine, some birds are like that. It does mean that you're gonna want to get them another bird to be their friend because it will be too lonely for them. Tallulah got really attached to me really quick you also might be wondering why I have an adult who is single. That's because I got her a week or two after her mate had died. And I wasn't going to be trying to get a second bird in that moment when she just lost her mate. Additionally, she had a large amount of health problems when I adopted her. So she had like, she couldn't have gone near other birds anyway. She'd have to be quarantined. And, and by the time she started getting healthy enough that I could consider getting a second bird, to be her new mate or to try and find a bird that she would accept as her mate. It, she really thoroughly bonded to me and to the other members of my household and it's just not a need right now, especially since I work from home. So I'm here with her 100% of the time. While overall having, mul having a multiple birds or having a flock is ideal, just because it's ideal in most scenarios does not mean it's ideal for all. Not only can not everyone keep an entire flock of birds, or multiple birds, but not all birds do well in that setting as well. There are some reasons why a specific bird might not be a good fit for a multi-bird household, especially if the plan would be for them to live together. One of those is health. If they have chronic illnesses or any kind of sickness that can't be get gotten rid of that could go to other birds, they would be putting them at risk. Additionally, if they get stressed out really easily and have some kinds of problems, then other birds picking on them could be a big risk and they need to be separated anyway. Another thing is that when it comes to male pigeons, they can be really aggressive, especially if they were hand raised. So it's very common for hand raised males to need to be kept solo because usually they will excessively bully any other pigeons that they're with, especially if they're female. So they need to be kept single. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So when looking into getting pigeons, it can be helpful to keep those things in mind when deciding if you already know you want multiple birds so they can entertain each other, maybe try and find a mated pair that's already well established. You know they get along, they've been mated, all, they're, they're already mated, they need to be together and you are happy to provide them a home together, that would be ideal. Or you could specifically search out male pigeons that were hand raised that have a history of being very mean to other pigeons and should be just on their own. That segues in really nicely to another thing to think about which is aggression and how easy something is to tame. 
And when it comes to that, pigeons are fantastic. While the males can get, can be a bit more aggressive depending on the individual, even in that case, they are not as big of a deal as many other animals, particularly just based off their anatomy. Pigeons have soft beaks without a lot of strength behind them. So unlike a parrot, which can just create a bloody mess if they want to, even if they bite as hard as they can, at the very most, it feels like a pinch. It's not a huge deal. Additionally, they don't really fight with their claws. It's not a problem. The way that a pigeon usually would choose to be aggressive if it decided to do that would be using their wings to hit something. Once again, that doesn't really feel like anything. It kind of feels like being lightly whacked. It's not a problem at all. Now there is something that you should keep in mind if you're looking into pigeons that is one of the few downfalls or potential downfalls depending on your lifestyle and who you are, which is that they can be messy. That said, if you are used to almost any other animal, it's not a huge deal. Compared to a shedding dog, it's not a huge deal. Compared to a parrot that throws blueberries up the wall and across the ceiling and stains everything, it's not a huge deal. So keep that in mind. It all depends on your point of reference. They make this mess through three ways, which is throwing their seeds. They usually use a head flicking motion when they're going through their seed dish. Likely there's going to be seeds flung about. You can vacuum or sweep them up with no problem. The other way they make mess is by poop, but we've already covered how to fairly easily mitigate that issue. Lastly, is the one that could potentially cause the most amount of issues for you, which is that they can be relatively dusty. They have a totally different system of keeping their feathers clean, which utilizes dust. They do molt fairly frequently, usually twice a year. Due to this dusty nature, if you have allergies or asthma or anything else that makes dust a issue for you, they could be a bad choice. I've also seen someone who needed to rehome their birds recently because they had COVID and as a result their lungs were really sensitive so the doctor told them that they need to rehome their birds because the dust was causing too many problems with their now very sensitive lungs. So if you have lung issues or a problem with dust or you hate dusting, it might not be a good fit. Now the last thing you might be wondering is where do I get a pigeon? And let's want to just scoop it up off the street. Please don't just scoop up random pigeons from the street. Now there's multiple ways that people can get pigeons. My personal favorite is adoption by accepting a bird that is needing to be rehomed or one that was a feral pigeon that had an injury of some kind and has been rescued and now is unreleasable. You are able to help a bird in need, which is fantastic. They can make fantastic pets, even if they weren't hand raised or anything like that. So that's, it's not so much of an issue. If you're worried about having a best friend in a bird, you don't have to think that just because it is an adopted feral pigeon that was rescued, it's going to not like you. So it's definitely not necessary to buy a baby pigeon if you want one that's going to get along really well with you or wear harnesses or anything like that. Birds that are from a rescue that used to be feral are fantastic and lots of people have amazing relationships with them even if they had no interaction with humans for the first many years of their life. You can look up and see if there is a pigeon rescue in your country. If so, that's fantastic. That's the ideal way to get them because not only have they come from a bad place and need help, they also usually will have their medication, like their medical checkup has been done. They're on the way to being tame. Additionally, because they're a rescue, and the birds are usually coming from foster homes by the time they're up for adoption, they will know not only the personality, but the needs for the specific bird. So they can help match you with a bird that will be a really good fit for your life. Now, if there's no pigeon specific rescue in your area or country, you can simply contact your local shelters because even though it's rare to see pigeons up for adoptions from them, they get delivered them fairly frequently because pigeons, specifically feral pigeons are so common There'll be injured ones, people drop them off because it's a hurt animal, and usually they get euthanized, sadly enough. So usually you'll have to tell whatever your local rescue is that you are looking to give a home to a pigeon. That way when they have one come in, instead of just euthanizing it right off the bat because no one wants it, they'll be able to call you. Another way people get pigeons is by buying them from breeders. Now I don't recommend buying from a breeder 
purely because not only are they being bred often if they're fancy pigeons to have some pretty significant health problems that I'll get into in a later video, they also are, there's so many pigeons that already need homes that are fantastic animals that it's just unnecessary to breed them for the most part. Aside from the adoption fee for the bird itself, which is very reasonable, is the cost of supplies for just getting started. So cage, um, food, toys, perches, harnesses, things like that. And overall, that's not that much either. Honestly, the biggest cost with pigeons is the vet bill. Like with most pets, you should have a savings set aside in case of emergencies. But if you are getting a bird from a well-established rescue, they probably already have all the initial medication, uh, vet checkups, all that stuff is usually done. So the, like deworming, all that kind of stuff has usually already been dealt with, which will bring that cost quite a bit down. It's also part of the reason why the uh, adoption fees are really reasonable. That said, they'll still need checkups, etc., etc., which are kind of standard price for any other animal. That said, don't just assume you're going to get a minimal, you know, once a year checkup type thing, because things can go wrong, especially if you're the one just straight up adopting a bird that hasn't had full workups before. If you're the first one getting them from a bad place, it's much higher likelihood that you're going to be getting a lot of high vet bills. Tallulah ended up needing just under $2,000 worth of vet visits and medications when I first got her because she's had a large amount of health problems. Overall, pigeons make amazing pets for the right person. And because there are so many in need of homes, yeah, and most people don't think of them as a potential pet, they just go unloved. And they make amazing companions. Yeah. And they give the best kisses. Best pigeon kisses. Oh, they pet pigeon kisses. If you want to learn more about pigeons as pets, I recommend checking out the Palomacy website. I'm not in any way affiliated with them, but they have a lot of great resources if you're looking at learning more about pigeons as companion animals. Have a lovely day. Bye. While not all pigeons are a big stretch. You're so sleepy. Hi. Yeah. Oh, my sleepy girl. Oh, my sleepy girl. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You can't go there. No. Mm -hmm. You can't jump on the camera. You can't jump on the camera.